of Hacksters. Today in the studio we have Zach Shelby, the co-founder of Edge Impulse. Hi, Zach. Hi, Alex. Hi, everyone. What's up? What is what is Edge Impulse and who are you? <laughs> well, I'm an entrepreneur that likes to enable embedded engineers to, to access all kinds of new technology. Uh -huh. And we got really excited working with machine learning a couple of years ago when I was at ARM. Mm. And um, we started thinking about, well, how can we make this machine learning accessible for embedded people? Like, what are the barriers for them to get access to this? Um, we worked on some great open source projects like TensorFlow Micro, mm. where we can enable the math to get small enough to run on a Cortex-M. Yeah. But gathering data, developing models, and trying to deploy those models to the edge was really, really hard. So yeah. um, Edge Impulse is all about me and Yang Yang Boom. Um, creating something that enables uh, embedded software developer to gather their own data sets, um, develop models, and really easily deploy those at the edge. And we've just done that in the office, actually, and it was it was incredibly easy. Yeah. Uh, as someone who hasn't done a ton of machine learning stuff, I found it incredibly easy to pick up, and you really designed the interface so that it kind of leads you through the whole process. And you can easily modify your data sets, retrain your models. Yeah, I, I always think of it as like a DevOps experience, right? We want to make sure that we're automating the hard work of gathering data, organizing it, and then like regenerating these models. Because as you improve your data sets, you need to keep retraining and improving your models. Mm -hmm. And that means continuous testing and integration. And that's exactly what we're doing by you know, automating that process. And that makes it just a lot easier to use at the same time. Yeah. And you, you're mentioning as well, in terms of this testing sort of idea, it's sort of like unit testing where like each time you add something to your model, like a new gesture to recognize or something, it doesn't break the earlier ones. Yeah, that's right. It's really important that as you develop a model and you see that it works for something, and we're going to look at continuous gestures. So mm -hmm. your model works when you're moving up and down. Well, you want to be able to record a test case that shows that it still works for that thing yeah. that you did when you start doing waving. You don't want it to break the up and down when you add waving. Gotta and so, keep my up and down. Exactly. So we have this kind of um, unit testing for ML, which is really interesting to make sure that your thing still works before you go to deployment. That's so awesome. So yeah, who exactly would you say this is for? You've already said a little bit about it, but like. So our, our vision was that, you know. Embedded is already hard enough as it is, yeah. right? We have to be super ninjas of hardware, hardware interfaces, low-level software drivers, <laughs> energy. There's so many <laughs> things to optimize in embedded systems that we, we can't expect all embedded people to be data scientists at yeah. the same time. So what we wanted to do is really make this stuff accessible for normal software people that work with devices. Whether you're an embedded engineer, or you're working with apps, or you're working right in the back end where the sensor data lands in the cloud, we want it to be easy for you to generate your own ML algorithms for sensors, um, for audio, for things that we want to detect in real time, and then make it easy to deploy those algorithms. Cool. And you've mentioned both gestures and audio, and those are the two things that kind of we've been playing with with this STM32 uh, Nucleo board, right? Mm -hmm. What's the deal with this board? Well, we found this really cool board that, um, that has both accelerometers and yeah, I show this. This is an ST IoT discovery board. Ah. And the cool thing about it is it's got a standard Cortex M4, so no special neural network m acceleration magic there. Uh -huh. It's just a normal Cortex M4. But it's got Wi Fi with um, accelerometers and microphones. That's great. And that's a really nice combination to get started with. Yeah, you can get gestures, you can get, uh, you said both human speech and non human speech. That's right. I love this idea of machines talking. Yeah. Uh, so you're thinking like coffee machines. Could be it could be faucets running, uh -huh. detecting a water leak, um, or even things like machine failure. Right, certain machines will will sound very very different when there's mm. something wrong with them. So you can detect when there's an anomaly in machines. Yeah, I'm thinking. You know, ever since I saw the first Willy Wonka movie, uh, I've fell in love with this uh, piano that he would play to like unlock a uh, a door. And like you could make a little thing that recognizes the right tune or like a whistled, you know, do do yeah. do 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 or whatever, like if you're like Absolutely. talking to aliens. <laughs> Absolutely could do that. You'd have the alien alarm go off. That, oh yeah. That Alex is talking to aliens again. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me this time. I'll just, we gotta change our code word or something. But then they'll just retrain it with the new code word. Ah yeah. yeah. And there's so many other applications. Uh -huh. Um like 
human biosignals or something, we're already seeing people do tiny ML with. So detecting activity based on heart activities, right? From, right, from a sensor yeah. um, to ultrasound sensors. So looking at what's happening with like distance patterns, yeah. even to really precise location, mm -hmm. we can look at location patterns. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, anything that has a wide bandwidth, right? We can start to detect patterns using tiny machine learning. And I think this will go all the way to still images um, at the microcontroller level. As we start to get more Dang. more processing power, we'll be able to process images and look at um, anomalies in images, look at patterns. Yeah, because you said that that takes a lot more uh, than, for example, a, like with gesture detection, we're training on based on three data points, right? X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z accelerometer. Uh, and then once you're doing the images, like, you know, thousands of pixels and stuff. It is, but the cool thing about embedded is we don't tend to use really high resolution cameras. We tend huh. to use pretty real resolution cameras, and so the patterns aren't that complicated. It, it's interesting, when you work with audio, we really turn audio into a spectrogram, mm -hmm. and a spectrogram is an image. So really, um, neural right. networks working with audio are very similar to low resolution images. Hmm. So as we get huh. a little bit more computing power, like a Cortex-M7, for uh -huh. example, we're very well in our, in our compute bandwidth to handle still images as long as we don't have lots and lots of images coming in so video right. tends to be a little bit outside the realm of um, deep embedded mm. huh, that's awesome and uh so what are you you're launching this yep. for developers and do they have to pay for it no we wanted to make sure that for individual developers who are working on their own projects and even deploying a product we wanted to make sure this is free for them because um, it's going to take time for people to learn about machine learning and embedded. What's possible, what is cool to solve problems with it, um, mm -hmm. and what can be deployed. And we want this to be for everyone. So we're deploying our developer offering completely for free. Even for people build, building products? Even for people building products. That's so yep. cool. All our code, all our SDKs will be Apache 2 licensed. So it'll be really easy to integrate that in the actual product um, of any kind. And then we work with large enterprises who need a lot of advanced features, large teams working together, yeah. and then we help them get products to market as well. This thing you said about um, it being compatible with a bunch of different systems, you said that you really want to get out of the way of the developers, and at the same time, this kind of uh, cross-platform compatibility makes it really easy for people to share things with each other, like data sets or models. That's right. Yeah. That's so cool! Yeah, we look at it as being kind of like the infrastructure uh -huh. for enabling tiny amount as a service. and. We're really community oriented. This isn't about us yeah. developing every algorithm that everyone needs. We're a platform where people can extend the algorithms. Um, people will be able to contribute algorithms to the open source community, mm -hmm. um, port our SDKs to new platforms that we've never seen before, Yeah. Um, and then deploy the code in places that we never even imagined. So this flexibility of extension yeah. um, and innovation, I think, is really important. Yeah, I'm thinking some of the Spark from Artemis boards seem like they'd be a great match for this. That'd be a great target, yeah. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Uh, and if someone wants to get started with this, uh, they get a certain amount of like free server time for training their models and stuff? That's right. That's our only limitation is that server time does cost. Uh -huh. And so we throw in a bundle of time every month for each developer. Pretty sweet. And then if somebody wants to go way over that, they can help us um, support the platform. To help. And even that's pretty cheap. It's like 10 cents a minute, you said? Yeah, that's what we're trying to keep. Keep, keep the time cheap and, um, yeah. and make sure everyone can go and, and develop on the platform. That's so great. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to throw in there before we wrap up? No, I think I'm, I'm really interested to see what people create with this, right? What are the amazing applications, different types of sensors people want to work with, yeah. um, things that people can, can detect, and then the sharing across the community, right? Yeah. People telling others what they've been doing, how they've been doing it, um, doing tutorials. So that's the thing that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, tutorials, yes. Um, and how do people uh, sign up for this? Where do they go? So edgeimpulse.com, uh, really simple. Uh, sign up for an account. Um, you want to get one of these ST uh, discovery boards. We have a great out-of-the-box experience where you can right away get up and running and get data flowing, as we'll see in a moment. And uh, Or um, port this to your own board and start working with your own sensors oh, yeah. and, and show people about it so you can really get into, into quick porting of this stuff to your own platforms as well. That's so cool. We've got some data sets um, in the tutorials as well so if you don't have a hardware platform you'll be able to import our data sets uh, from the command line and get started without hardware while, while it's on the way. 
Yeah, because we were playing around with that in the office. You put a couple of trained models in my account, we were able to check those with some extra classification points to make sure that they were working well at the right amount of accuracy, which is yep. really fascinating to me. Yep. Uh, and then we were able to just plug this in. You didn't see this, but uh, all I had to do was make sure I had Node and NPM installed, uh, and then install uh, the Edge Impulse CLI, and it was like basically instant. It was so cool. So we'll put all the links to these uh, pages that we've mentioned in the description to this video. Check them out. Let us know what you're building. We'd love to see your tutorials. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Alex. We're going with the continuous gestures project that's already been set up. To add a new piece of training data, you'll choose the Nucleo device, as well as the total sample length, which sensor you're using, and the sampling interval. Once it's done, you'll see how your trained model classifies the input and be able to analyze it in a few different ways. If you like, you can add this new training data to your set. You can also keep a few known good, unclassified samples on hand to test future iterations of the model.